Now we're going to talk the project titled Fire Poctab. Francisco Senra, who is the head of the Knowledge Analysis and Management Department, he belongs to the Under Secretariat of Forests and Environmental Emergencies from the Government of Andalusia. So, Francisco, you have the floor in order to introduce this project to our audience. Okay, good morning. <clears throat> Welcome. Thank you so much. Well, first off, thank you very much for allowing me to participate at this uh, webinar to provide you with an overview about uh, the FIRE POCTEP project, as well as sharing with you a cross-cutting view as to the issue of wildfires in our territory. Could you please confirm that you can all see my screen? Yes, we can. I will use the next eight minutes in order to walk you through the Fire POCTEP project. This uh, project is uh, within the framework of the Fire POCTEP project or the POCTEP project. It has a number of goals that are fully aligned with the EU Green Week. We are speaking about specific measures in order to adapt ourselves to climate change across sectors, addressing specific problems such as wildfires. Bear in mind that what for fires do not need to be uh, a threat. They are perhaps not a threat to certain ecosystems that are perfectly adapted to fires, uh, because that has been so for many years. Fire has been on the planet um, for thousands of years, and flora and fauna are therefore adapted to fire, especially well, in some ecosystems, perhaps more in some ecosystems than in others. In the Mediterranean and on the Atlantic side, we can see or we can say that what fires have, fire has always been present. Not no doubt, however, climate change makes some of these fires to become wildfires that may be devastating with huge environmental, social, and economic consequences. So the Fire Protect project enables us to move forward in preventing wildfires, taking some actions that I will share with you. So this project was recently approved in January 2021, even though uh, um, we got a green light after a resolution was passed in April. Of course, at first we had a number of hindrances. These projects normally allow for a huge opportunity, but they also lead to some commitments and obligations that are difficult to be undertaken by some public administrations. So as a public administration, we had to request a credit prior to the resolution. You cannot actually obtain the credit until the resolution is passed. That takes time. And then you also need to outsource and purchase certain projects products and services related to the project that may also require an additional eight months for a resolution to be passed. So any projects that may um, be or any projects of these characteristics may take up to two years and it entails a lot of work sometimes due to the bureaucratic um, steps that we have to follow delays happen. So. Uh, 5.6 million euros have been allocated in order to finance this project and it includes the following uh, goals. First of all, to learn from the current uh, circumstances and to learn from wildfires as a result of climate change while also learning from the outcomes of COVID-19 and therefore um, develop some actions in order to promote employment in the rural environment. So these are the main goals. First of all, to identify the risk of wildfires in certain areas, promoting public and private uh, investments through pilot experiences, and 
educating the population, everything is around a number of pilot areas that provide us with the opportunity to run experiments, developing concrete actions uh, in order to carry out the project. Fire Poktep is the practical implementation of some other projects of these uh, kind that were designed in the past. So we have a number of challenges. For example, when we have to uh, determine the areas where the project will be carried out, also promoting employment, raising awareness, training, and preparing collaboration protocols. This is a cross-border project, and that's why we need to do so. Before I say that uh, carrying out a European project within less than two years is a challenge. Well, this is another challenge. There are 22 beneficiaries involved, which means that there's a lot of coordination required. The government of farming, livestock, fisheries, and agricultural development of Andalusia takes care of this. This project applies to Andalusia all the way to Algarve, crossing Extremadura, Castile and Leon, all the way up to Alto Minho and Galicia. So we can say that this project encompasses the whole uh, cross-border region, which gives us a huge opportunity. These are all the partners involved. They include local, municipal, and regional entities, research centers, foundations, universities, etc. So, as you can see, it's an uh, overarching uh, scope that is highly fruitful and allows for networking giving rise to significant collaboration opportunities. And I'm running out of time, so now let me touch upon the pilot areas. Um, they are as described here. There's one in Andalusia and Extremadura, another one in Portugal, another one on the border with Galicia in Orense and Pontevedra. This enables us to characterize the different forestry ecosystems and the current situation of wildfires uh, in the area between Spain and uh, Portugal. Activity number two has to do with the provision of equipment, whether we are talking about uh, protection purposes or the like. And it also enables us to develop best practices on uh, fire prevention. We also have a number of workshops uh, in order um, or as a way to create green jobs by launching different uh, programs and building synergies to create new opportunities or to create entrepreneurial projects uh, across spheres within the framework of activity number three. And uh, finally, the fourth line of action has to do with uh, networking with other entities. We keep on working on the same uh, topic but in this case, we try to bring on board uh, members from the um, from those groups of society living in these rural environments, so that these projects are not just projects for spending money, but rather so that they can be used for research purposes, but always keeping a direct link with each territorial uh, region. Here you can see all the partners involved and the allocation of uh, the budgetary items throughout 2021-2022. This is an overview of all the costs. We have a number of communication actions. The, um, this project will be officially uh, launched in Seville. It's now called the um, Hall of the Three Cultures. That's where the Seville exhibition took place many years ago. So thank you very much. I hope that I have complied with the time allotted to me. And of course, I shall be at your disposal to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Francisco. Please, uh, could you um, stop sharing your screen? Thank you so much for having summarized uh, all the activities that you are carrying out. In, within the uh, fire pocktab project in order to fight against wild 
fires uh, in the border between Portugal and uh, Spain. So let's move on with the next two speakers. Now, I will share my screen. to introduce the next panel that will tackle the following topic, the relevance of technology transfer and knowledge transfer in preventing wildfires. Our speakers are Almudena Justo, who is the director of the EU Innovation and Program Department at FEUGA, and Jose Manuel Requena, who is the European Project Manager and the delegate responsible for the FINOVA office in Andalusia. Almudena, you have the floor. Please share your screen. I will stop sharing mine. So you can start when you're ready. Thanks. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Almudena Justo. I'm the director of innovation and EU programs at FEUGA, the Galician Enterprise University Foundation. I'm going to talk today about the relevance of technology transfer and multi-actor approach in forest fires innovation and, and prevention, and in particular, to talk about the fire pocket case study together with my colleague, uh, Jose Manuel Requena from Finnova. Sorry, it seems that it doesn't work now. Okay. So uh, first of all, let me introduce my entity, FEUGA. We are a private nonprofit foundation with more than 30 years of experience in technology transfer between the university, industry, and society. We are experts in innovation management, let's say uh, experts in communication, dissemination, IP and exploitation. So um, you can see here some of our success stories, our EU projects and uh, connected uh, operational groups at national and, and regional level. We uh, participate in this project, as I have said, as innovation manager, as partner in charge of communication, dissemination and, and IP. And for that purpose, we have a multidisciplinary team of more more than 20 professionals from complementary profiles, including engineers, journalists, political scientists, and, and IP experts, and, and so on. I would like to highlight that uh, we represent also the three public universities in our region, University of Vigo, Santiago de Compostela, and, and La Coruña, and we usually give support to them to participate in, in this type of um, European projects. Um, we also uh, are quite active in Europe through our participation in several EU platforms and, and other initiatives that you can see here, uh, such as, for example, uh, relevant for this case, the EIP Agri, the European Innovation Partnership on Agriculture. So, um, in the field of technology transfer, I'm going to focus now in the multi-actor approach and how to engage the different the stakeholders for co-creation following this EAP Agri uh, in, uh, interactive innovation model. So the point here is that uh, the traditional top-down linear model of knowledge transfer from science to end users is uh, increasingly outdated. Knowledge no longer flows in one direction. Challenges now in agriculture and forestry are becoming more and more complex. So it is necessary to see them from all angles. So um, to ensure that project results are implemented in practice is essential to work together. And the multi-actor approach brings the right people together from science, practice or anyone who can help tackle the objective of the project. 
all experience and knowledge are therefore taken into account and the partners create results together to answer uh, real problems. It also means that partners with complementary types of knowledge, let's say scientific, practical, and, and, and other, uh, must join forces in, in the project uh, activities from, from the beginning to the end. You can see here the uh, European Innovation Partnership on Agriculture a guideline to implement this uh, multi-actor approach uh, methodology. So it is uh, relevant to target real life needs and problems or opportunities. Also to choose the consortium partners with complementary types of knowledge and, and skills, including also farmers, foresters, and other end users and, and stakeholders. And of course, to involve multipliers, people who can bring in practical knowledge and help to disseminate the results in long term. In long term, that this is the case. Uh, this is our case in, in, in Feuga. It is important to set up a plan with a clear role for each of the different uh, partners and organize uh, knowledge exchange uh, activities. So um, we need to bridge the gap between research and, and practice by facilitating uh, discussions and, and involve interactive innovation groups, such as, for example, the EIP uh, agri operational groups. As I have said, we, uh, we participate in, in several of, of those operational groups at regional and, and national level. Um, all partners must uh, co create and, and co decide through, throughout the project. And um, it is relevant to illustrate how the project complements existing research and, and best practices. Another point to, to take into account is uh, to produce practical information, including the so-called practice abstracts, which fits into the most common existing dissemination channels. So we in FEUGA have been working on that, have been working on the multi-actor approach methodology, designing and boosting demand driving interactive innovation models. Um, we have a, a relevant background implementing collaborative innovation methodologies based on the uh, so-called innovation broker profile, widely validated in multi-actor approach, EAP agri thematic networks such as uh, the Horizon 2021 network and Affinet projects and, and also in other Horizon 2020 projects such as Tropic Aid, Roma, Soil Liberagro and, and so on. These projects, uh, FEUGA has developed this open innovation methodologies, creating multi-collaborative innovation ecosystems around Europe, dealing with the involvement of a relevant number of stakeholders. You can see here uh, some of our publications related, related to the multi-actor approach methodology. So uh, finally, in Fire Poctep, we will apply our previous knowledge for the definition of open innovation methodologies in the rural environment, in particular applying this multi-actor approach to strengthen uh, cross-border systems for the prevention and extinction of uh, forest fires. Uh, in this project, we collaborate with uh, Finnova, also expert in, in this field. And now my colleague, Jose Manuel Requena, will explain to you the tech transfer work that will be developed in, in Firefox Tech. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Almudena. As you have just said, we are now going to welcome our next speaker who will elaborate further on your presentation. So here he is, Jose Manuel Requena. He is the European project manager and he is the delegate of FINOVA at the Andalusian office. So, Jose Miguel, you have the floor. You can start sharing your screen anytime. Thanks. Sí. 
Can you all see the screen? Good morning. Well, I'll do my presentation in Spanish, but should I have to answer any questions in English? Of course, I can do that. Uh, Jose Manuel, we have simultaneous translation available, so don't worry. Good morning, everybody. Today it's uh, June the 10th, a very important day for our Portuguese uh, friends because it's a national day of the Portuguese uh, language. So I would like to extend my greetings to our Portuguese uh, partners. So the Finova Foundation is a European foundation that is headquartered in Belgium. We are engaged in open innovation and entrepreneurship. We have different uh, offices across uh, Spain and the Fire Poctep project will be promoted from our offices located in Andalusia. I uh, will not actually uh, talk any further about this project because my colleague Francisco Senra already provided you with an introduction. Let me therefore go straight to the six activities within the scope of this project. We are going to work on knowledge and technology transfer in order to fight against wild forests. Uh, so activity number three specifically, um, is an activity that consists in creating an assisted platform. Uh, number four, we are going to have some networking and we're going to work with a specialist task force. And activity six has to do with some communication and dissemination actions uh, in order to allow for knowledge and technology transfer. The FIRE POCTEC project falls under the umbrella of the European Cohesion Initiative and thematic goal number five concerned with climate change and risk management prevention. As for FINOVA and the consortium made up uh, to attain this goal and in order to carry out transfer technology as well as knowledge technology and best practices, we are going to use a methodology based on a public and private uh, partnership. So here we are talking about research members, civil society representatives, universities and business representatives being involved. My colleague Almudena has already talked about this multi-actor or multi-stakeholder um, collaboration approach that we follow. Well, this is also connected to this public and private partnership and this uh, four-piece um, approach that we want to put forward as part of our POCTEC. So we want to have an open collaboration and innovative model in place. We are going to I try to cover the whole cross-border region between Portugal and Spain from Galicia all the way down to Andalusia. And once we have identified common challenges, we are going to put in place a number of innovative actions at FIRE, BOCTEC. We are going to focus not only on individual actions that may have an impact uh, on the territory at a local level, but also we're trying to drive exponential changes by bringing uh, in cutting edge projects and ideas so that we can all learn from um, one another to see what others are doing, for example, from north to south and the other way around. We want to learn from all the partners to these partnerships. So we will seek solutions to these challenges that should not be local solutions, however, but rather that can be uh, shared solutions for the whole cross-border region. We will try to identify transformational projects, bringing them together in a specific uh, region. So that's the goal that we pursue through the fire pop tag project. We can test cutting edge solutions in order to do 
knowledge transfer and to transfer good practices as my colleague Francisco Senra mentioned uh, before. There will be five pilot areas. There will be two in Portugal. There will be three in Spain. Uh, in the case of Portugal, there will be in Alentejo, Alto Minho. Um, thanks to this, we will be able to attain two of the project goals that is identifying strategic management areas to minimize the risk of wildfires through the adequate management of the landscape and the flora and fauna we also want to identify new market niches all these connected to the green circular economy so all that knowledge transfer will also be marked by all the tests that we will run in the pilot areas how are we going to measure the ecosystem and the public and private partnership that will be part of this project. We have set out four actions or four methodologies. First of all, we're going to collaborate with stakeholders. Second, we're going to collaborate with the Firefighting Open Innovation Lab or CLIFO. This is another a partner that works with FirePocTEP. Then the FirePocTEP acceler acceleration very quickly now let us talk about uh, collaboration with stakeholders uh, one example could be our collaboration with the eit climate cic which is uh, the main community of climate innovation financed by the eu with the goal of catalyzing systemic changes for climate action. We participate actively at Climate Kick. We are a partner to this community. And uh, the Climate Kick methodology will be about transferring knowledge so that all project partners can benefit. The e IT Climate CIC is supported by the European Innovation and Technology Institute, a body that uh, belongs to the EU. So FINOVA will work in order to identify cutting edge solutions through a number of challenges that will be put in place by all of the project partners. And we will try to realize them into concrete actions with an impact on the cross-border region. At FINOVA, as an EIT Climate Kick member, we will try to offer a systemic innovation model as a service in order to uh, harness four key pillars. I have already spoken about those four key um, pillars. Uh, for example, the owners, the drivers, and the those implementing the challenges, the industry leaders, the business sector, R&D centers, community, and um, financing sources. All of this in order to fight against climate change. As a result of this work, we will have a number of products, services, and processes that will be made available to users. For example, we can have some kind of testing uh, bank containing mature uh, projects and ideas. We will also have a catalog of innovative technologies. We will also have a legislative catalog containing potential legal restrictions that may hamper access to the market or that may hamper access to knowledge transfer. Also a catalog of good practices and knowledge as a source of innovation and learning. And finally, some networking and collaboration with other entities. Next, in order to transfer knowledge and best practices at technology, we will use the Firefighting Open Innovation Lab tools. They uh, collaborate with uh, FirePocTEP, therefore we will uh, work together in order to maximize 
all the resources that will be made available by FIOPOCTEP in order to allow for cross-border collaboration. We are going to use that collaboration so that impact on society can be greater, so that we can reach out to society better. Third, we have the so-called fire pocktap acceleration. This means that we want to speed up uh, the implementation of ideas once identified. We will turn them into real projects. This is based on this methodology called startup. Uh, Europe Acceleration Fire Pocktap. It's fostered by the EC, and this is the roadmap. We will launch this Acceleration by launching uh, a call to invite uh, companies to sign up and participate in the Acceleration. Uh, initiative. Next, we are going to make learning tools available to startups on entrepreneurs for them to uh, learn about European projects and financing. Number four, we are going to work together with all those who signed up to participate. And then we're going to have some playoffs, so to speak, or semi-final. And we are going to shortlist those that will make it all the way to the uh, end. They will have to present the proposals that they may have been working on. And the winner will be given an acceleration kit so that the fire pocktap team will turn that uh, winner in order to turn their innovative idea into a European project. And in closing, we have um, the so-called thematic weeks. The EU Green Week is an example of this. This is a way to showcase the project and they are also a good way to transfer technology best practices and knowledge while collaborating with other entities on an ongoing basis. So these were the four core ideas that we will continue to use and drive together with Finova and Feuga. So we would like to encourage you to sign up in order to participate in the Accelerathon Challenge. Thank you very much, Angela. Thank you so much, uh, Francisco. Thank you so much for your presentation and for explaining the relevance of knowledge and technology transfer to prevent wildfires in uh, the border between Spain and Portugal. So please uh, stop sharing your uh, screen so we can now uh, give the floor to the next uh, roundtable. Thank you. So we are going to start with our roundtable where we will have uh, Francisco Senra from the Regional Government of Andalusia, head of the Analysis and uh, Knowledge Management area, Fernanda Aguado from the University of Vigo, and David Martin. And they are going to talk about how to prevent big uh, forest fires environmental, economic, and social factors. So we are going to give the floor to Fernando Aguado, who is going to present the FIRE RS project. And uh, Fernando, you have the floor. Whenever you're ready, you can share your screen. Thank you very much. I'm glad to participate in this project, uh, presenting our project. Um, I have a, a small video first. So I think if I share it, it should work directly with the sound on. Can you see it? Can you hear me? And you can see the screen, right? As I have two screens, uh, can you see the, the complete slides? Okay, so 
as a uh, precursor project to Fire RS, we had another one coordinated by the University of Vigo and the participation of the uh, Faculty of Engineering of Porto and the Robotics uh, Center in France. Last in Toulouse, and uh, I think an image is worth uh, more than a thousand words. So let's have a look at this video. On the first quarter of uh, 2019, more than 600 fires were registered in Galicia. One hundred and twenty seven uh, civil se civilians and firefighters uh, died, and uh, the amounts um, devoted by administrations to firefighting are increasing. And the Junta de Galicia is uh, providing more and more funds to uh, f uh, to fight fires in our uh, forests and minimize their effects on the population and the environment, coordinated uh, by the University of Vigo with the collaboration of the University of, of Porto and uh, an organization uh, from Toulouse. We, are, we have launched this project. Funded by the Interreg European Program, and given uh, all the new systems that we have to collect data in an automated way to really assess the uh, spreading of a forest fire. With this detection system that combines infrared sensors and a satellite, a drone, and a state-of-the-art fire prevention software. In the first stage of the program, the University of Vigo devised a um, land-based system with uh, thermal cameras that send information to the land-based systems when the sensors detect a fire they send an alarm to the satellite that uh, transmits to the University of Vigo and they send the data to the control center in France. Uh, in Toulouse, they follow the fire for the uh, drones to collect more data in situ. And on the third stage of the project, different vehicles uh, fly the area with a an artificial uh, intelligence system that collect more data after three years since its beginning fire re has uh, combined different technologies to uh, fight against fires and predict a better um, to get a better prediction of how the fire will spread.
I think this video gives a clear idea of the objective of this project uh, funded for three years with two million euros and we've been lucky to integrate all these systems and uh, the uh, including technologies that are apparently are not integrated may be essential for the integration system defining processes uh, like the one we had from a legal point of view of when you can fly drones or not was an aspect that uh, well we had some issues with it some restrictions on their use also including artificial intelligence uh, for planning is uh, essential and combining all those sensors with communication on areas that had no um, reception with satellite coverage. Uh, now we have so many solutions, we just need to know how to integrate them and take into account all the restrictions uh, from a budget and legal point of view. But I think that uh, these integration uh, concepts with different technologies are essential to favor the fight against fires. Uh, we have thermal images, the integration with a automated identification system and connection with the drones that may be like small robots that can be in the future deployed in different areas. So they are always close to the fire. Uh, up to now, the fires were synthetic, the drones were close to them, uh, they were in controlled environments, but the results were extremely good. The uh, satellite uh, Lume Uno one uh, is adapted with a software, and these are the results on the processing of on that data processing. We integrate databases with the use of the land, with predictions uh, given by those sensors in real time. And they also provide information about the wind. And in the future, these may be used to add value to our systems. Um, this is what we've been down, uh, doing in these last few years. And from a technological point of view, this is a very interesting project with very good outcomes. Um, and I believe that the technology developed may be a proof of what can be done nowadays. And this is what I wanted to tell you. I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Fernando, for joining us today. We know you were very busy. So thank you for being here and sharing with us this FIRE RS project. And now we continue with our next uh, panelist. I'm going to share with you his uh, slide. His name is David Martin from the uh, Foundation Pau Costa, and he's going to talk about the importance of involving the society in risk man management. So, David, uh, whenever you're ready, you can share your screen. screen. Um, I apologize because I really have to go uh, because I, I am, I have a class, I'm, I'm giving lessons at one, um, so if, if you have any question, uh, my colleagues uh, attending from the research group um, are here to answer any questions. And I apologize because in five minutes I really have to leave. Okay, so David, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Angela. Thank you for inviting the foundation to this workshop. My name is David uh, from the Foundation Pau Costa, 
and I'm going to talk about the importance of involving the society uh, in wildfire risk management. I'm going to talk about how we face this question or this issue in our foundation, and then I will give you an example of a project that integrates this approach. The Pau Costa Foundation is a platform of knowledge exchange, and we work for the wildfire community, connecting first responders uh, and all those involved in a firefighting uh, management. Uh, I'm talking about uh, farmers, ranchers, managers, uh, ecologists, Mm, representatives of the public and private sectors and the society. The approach that we have in our foundation is based on two concepts that are very important. One would be resilient landscapes and the other one would be resilient societies. They both come from the same base. Uh, the fire is an natural element of ecosystems. Each ecosystem has its own fire regime. Some of them have more, other or less, but uh, the fire affects most of the ecosystems in our planet. Therefore, the problems uh, of fires are um, affecting the landscapes, which is the scenario for those fires. And in the last uh, few decades, that scenario has changed. And it has changed uh, quite quickly because of the uh, socio-economical changes in the use of the soil, in the use of the landscape, and of course, uh, because of the climate change, which is a natural phenomenon, but uh, with um, a topical origin. So we need to ask, why are our forests burned? What is going on in our landscape to be so likely to be uh, burned? That's why we talk about resilient landscapes, because we need to have an active management of the territory so it can be uh, vaccinated from uh, or against those uh, forest fires. We start on the same basis when we talk about societies. The uh, fire is, an, uh, not, is a natural element, but we have a problem here, which is that we have communities, sometimes communities of people who live uh, on the way of forest fires that mm, can arise at any moment. So the concept of resilient societies is based on the issue that people need to learn how to live with the fire. They need to be aware of the risk and be aware that they need to learn how to live with uh, the probability of having a fire in the forest. If we, go, if we go deeper in the concept of resilient societies, I think we need to start from the fact that the society is not just a problem, but it's, only, it's also part of the solution. We are mm, the ones producing climate change, the ones that uh, have our forests dirty or um, unorganized. This is true, there is a human um, reason for all of this, but we need to think on the society also as part of the solution. Thus, the solution to uh, forest fires is the management of the landscape and managing the risk, deciding together what kind of a landscape model we want and the society needs to be proactive when deciding the kind of landscape that we want obviously a agroforest uh, landscape with different types of habitats 
is a landscape that is more productive, biodiverse, because it can uh, include different types of um, animals and, and plants um, that live in open spaces and other habitats. And from the uh, forest fire point of view, it is a more resilient landscape that can stand a fire perturbation. And this um, also involves the fact of uh, the socialization of fire risk management. People need to understand that they are part of the solution and therefore the uh, responsibility of uh, managing forest fires needs to be shared. It, it's not just uh, the firefighter who is going to extinguish the fire, but we also need to promote all other types of activities to help. It's not just uh, the forest um, engineer who is there and, and is calling to say that there is a fire, but also promoting a specific treatments for the forest. And also the citizens need to be involved in the public policies to manage the territory and researchers who play an important role on increasing the knowledge about the problems that we have and which are the tools to solve them. I know this may sound um, quite idyllic, but we need to involve the, the society creating communication campaign, campaigns, uh, educational campaigns, uh, for people to be aware of the problem. I mean, I'm not saying that people need to be experts on fire and forest fires, but we need to have a culture and we need to know something about it if we are living in an area that may be affected by forest fires. We have knowledge about other aspects, uh, for instance, uh, football in Spain, which is a quite a traditional uh, football um, uh, country. People know about football, fo football, even if they are not fans. But I think the same should happen with fires. People who live uh, close to areas that may be affected by forest fires need to have a minimum knowledge about those fires. I'm talking about uh, now about foundations like uh, ours, like Pau Costa, where we are trying to promote to promote this this culture, this knowledge. Um, we have some examples here of how we communicate with uh, people and inform them about these forest fires. This is how we reach the society. We think educating is essential, but also I think that this knowledge is uh, linked to training. We need to provide the society with the tools so they uh, know how to contribute to these problems. We have MEFITO, which is a, an educational program for children on firefighting. Then we have the preparedness day addressed to people who live in the, ur, uh, in the urban and forest areas, areas that uh, ha have that join that those urban with uh, forest areas. It's uh, based on uh, the wildfire communities in the USA. We are trying to import this uh, successful model from the United States and adapt it to Europe. Another way of reaching the society is uh, through art. We have a campaign called Art on Fire, which is a itinerant campaign. And through art, we try to explain what is behind fires. We also have journal clubs, which are 
um, workshop, work, workshops for the general audience. We talk about ecology, self-protection, past fires, which are the strategies uh, for protection, self-protection. And also, uh, as I said, we talk about past fires that may be an opportunity to explain uh, why that fire happened and how we can uh, reduce the impact of, uh, of that fire. And finally, we also provide tools for educators, journalists, policymakers, uh, for them to understand because they are also communicating information they are not experts on forest fires, but we provide them with the tools to communicate the information. And I'm going to talk now about uh, Project SAFERS, which is funded by the European Commission, and it is part of the uh, Horizon 2020. The calls for this uh, project line is finished. David, um, as far as possible, I would like you to um, to be a little bit quick uh, to speed up your your presentation. Okay, yeah, three four minutes, and I will finish. So the the aim of Safers is to improve the effectiveness of wildfire management solutions aimed uh, to help society in becoming more resilient. And we do it uh, by creating technological uh, solutions, which are similar to the ones uh, our colleagues already presented. This is a three-year project with a budget amounting to a little bit more than 3 million euros, and it has 14 partners. I would, I would like to highlight um, the coordinators of um, this project. Uh, which is a an Italian foundation. And the last three logos that you see here are our par partners. We call them the final users and they are operational uh, organizations that help us and give us some guidelines on how to develop the technological tools for them to be useful we have uh, the firefighters of France, the Def Ministry of Defense of Greece, and the fire service of Greece. The final goal of SAFERS is to develop a technological platform to support the decision-taking process, integrating different uh, smart services like risk maps, uh, quick alert systems, uh, systems that um, and allow us to establish the perimeters, systems to monitor the recovery of a burnt area, and systems to assess the impact of fires, uh, especially uh, from an economic point of view, but also social and environmental point of view. These smart systems use artificial intelligence and also use uh, sources like satellite um, observations, sensors for early or quick deten detection of fire and smoke, Uh, social media to connect and involve the society on risk management to to see uh, how what what does the society think about the situations and and help how to take decisions and finally weather forecasts which are also essential uh, finally safers aims at acting on every single phase of the wildfire management cycle on the prevention and preparedness phase 
with those uh, risk maps that indicate the situations that may uh, lead to the uh, start of a forest fire um, with the weather of the area with uh, uh, this this early uh, detection is is very important also the um, location of vulnerable areas then on the second phase detection and response through different sources of information for uh, the people who work on forest fire emergency uh, services uh, can create documents to update the situation, the perimeter of the fire, where the units are located, what which are the vulnerable elements that may be affected. And finally, the restoration phase, what happens after the fire, uh, which are the damaged ecosystems and how this ecosystem can be recovered, restored, and if uh, necessary, adapted. So we can really monitor what uh, happens with those systems damaged by the fires. And on this emergency management cycle, the society needs to be involved through communication channels, such as uh, cell phone apps, social media, contact with volunteers. We have digital volunteers, forest uh, volunteers who are associated to the project. They are not part of their partners, but they are linked to the project. And we try to involve the society on the management of forest fires. So through these uh, volunteers and those social networks and apps, uh, we try to involve the society and give them um, some, some uh, ground or floor to speak. Thank you very much, David, but we are uh, behind the schedule. Thank you very much for your effort in this interesting uh presentation please if you can stop sharing your screen now and i'm going to ask francisco serra to share his screen now and in five minutes if you can talk about the project and analyze the importance of rural economy on fire prevention so francisco serra welcome again head of the analysis and knowledge management of the department of the uh, regional government of Andalusia. Um, I think I'm not going to share my presentation because we don't have much time. Uh, so I will try to generate some debate uh, if we have the option. So I'm glad that David and Fernando present it as well because they provided you with an overview about the current situation. So um, any technological improvement such as uh, what Fernando presented is of course necessary. This is a need. The way how we deal with emergencies is of course uh, compelling but we all need to uh, work together with society we have to leverage ourselves on society's support as well in this regard silifo is just another project such as fire Poctep, that includes all these three elements uh, by integrating innovation with universities and r d centers as well as managers we need to include regional and municipal administrations and it should also include civil society sometimes we fail to include civil society representatives and at the end of the day these projects provide for a financial opportunity but above all they enable us to build consortia 
in order to stir up discussions, finding some common ground, taking into account those three stakeholders, all of which are critical. Over the past decades, at least in Spain, but we have also seen this in other parts of the world, conservation and the role of public authorities to safeguard the conservation of ecosystems has been quite uh, positive. Uh, certain natural environments have been reclaimed, no doubt, the overuse of resources typical of the 40s and 50s was also curtailed. We know that at the time we had different historical developments such as the Spanish Civil War, but, and it's okay, but the administration cannot continue to play the role of the one oppressing um, or acting as a dictator with regards to the rural society. Of course, we need consensus and we need um, all conservation stakeholders to be on board because that's the only way how we are going to avoid the large wildfires that are affecting us today and the ones that can affect us, us in the future. So somehow we have to seek these projects so that we have the support of uh, rural society members. Wildfires will never be prevented successfully just by using technology or by building firewalls. We need to reclaim, recover the participation of rural inhabitants as the only way to be more proactive and being one step ahead of climate change. So that's about it. I just wanted to well, sort of stir up this discussion. I know that I, uh, I haven't been given much time, but I'm very uh, happy to have been able to share this panel with uh, David and uh, Fernando, who provided us with this uh, double perspective. But, but the ultimate goal here is again preventing what fires getting all stakeholders uh, involved and firefighting extension here is not clearly the only solution. Thank you so much, Francisco, for uh, having kept your address brief. Thank you very much um, also to all panelists who have shown how relevant it is for all citizens to uh, get on board uh, all projects concerning the prevention of wildfires. And with us come to the end of this two-day webinar, we have been able to learn about a great many projects that can help us improve our life and transform the planet into a more sustainable place where to live with the maximum quality of life possible. So on behalf of the Fundación Empresa Universidad Gallega, we would like to thank all of our speakers for sharing their expertise and know how with us, but also we would like to thank all of our attendees and participants. Should you need anything, please remember that you can contact the Fundación Empresa Universidad Gallega anytime.